When you're using a CNC on a regular basis, recurring friction points in your workflow add up. Little inconveniences can become big frustrations over time. One of the features we've wanted to borrow from the Nomad and apply to the Shapeoko was its tool offset probe. That way, you could change tools without having to re-zero your Z-height every single time. Or worse, forget to do so and crash a tool into your part. And to that end, we're introducing a new accessory for the Shapeoko, the bit setter. This is how it works. Install the bit setter on the front of your machine. There are set screws that will secure the bit setter to the frame. For stock size Shapeokos, there are two additional screws that prevent the tool probe from sitting too low since the frame is slightly shorter. Make sure you don't install it so far over that the Shapeoko can't reach it with an end mill. Plug the connector from the bit setter into your Carbide Motion Board's probe connector. If you're also using a touch probe, we have a signal splitter board that you can use since they share the same connector. Open up the latest version of Carbide Motion, connect to the Shapeoko, and jog your machine until the spindle is directly over the bit setter. Click on Position on the left side of the interface to switch the readout to machine coordinates instead of work coordinates. This shows you where the machine is relative to where the home position is rather than where the last place you set zero was. In the Settings tab of Carbide Motion, enable the use of the bit setter and input the current machine coordinates so that the Shapeoko knows where to go to measure a tool. And that's basically all there is for setup. When you're using the Shapeoko with the bit setter, the machine will probe for tool length when you first initialize it. Then, if you need to change the tool at any given point, just hit the Load Tool button and Carbide Motion will provide prompts to install a new end mill and probe for tool length. So now let's say you've set your zero height with a short tool that you've already touched off on the bit setter. If you install a new tool and measure its length, when you go to wrap it back to your old zero point plus six millimeters, Carbide Motion will automatically take into account the difference in the length of the tool and not crash into your stock. Additionally, anytime you have an M6 tool change command in your G code, Carbide Motion will have the Shapeoko measure its tool length. So expect this to happen when you first start most programs. The biggest change that BitSetter brings to your workflow is that you no longer need to separately export toolpaths that require different cutters. They can all be exported in a single program, and when the time comes, Carbide Motion will prompt you to turn off the router, change cutters, automatically measure the tool, and have you turn the router back on before continuing where it left off. You no longer need to disable or select subsets of your toolpaths when exporting. If you're interested in adding the bit setter to your workflow, it's available now in the Carbide 3D store. If you're changing tools often, we think it'll make your life a whole lot easier. Good luck and have fun machining, folks.